So, um, hello everyone. This is the uh, beginning of the The video is playing right now. I, I'm just My name is Henrique Wang. My name is Lucas Miyazaki. And together with Professor Suzuki and Misael Falheiro, I represent in designing a self payment cashier for our bakers using Yolo before. Our main goal is to help customers by reducing queuing time and establish owners by reducing the labor costs and increasing the flow rates and the checkouts. For this project, we try to focus on bakers. We are using the Yolo V4 at neural network to identify and count the products at the cashier, cash registers of bakers and then charge the customers in an automated way. Thus, our main goal is to develop a software for product identification in automatic cashiers. Our cashiers are composed of a webcam located 30 centimeters above the tray. These are the projects that we define as a catalog of objects for this research. To train the neural network, we produce the photos at home in a controlled environment. We, we use only one object per picture and we use a tray as a background. However, to prepare hundreds of images can be very tedious and laborious. So we prepared a, a automatic segmentation algorithm called region growing. In this algorithm, we choose a seed that is actually picked randomly. And this seed looks recursively for neighbors pixels that belong to the product. We realized that shadows and overilluminated spots could hinder the segmentation. Therefore, we applied a normalization to remove these effects. In order to the client to make the purchase, he has to first insert the tray in the right spot, then take a picture through the user interface, and this picture is sent to the server where it's, it's processed, and then the identified products and the total amount to pay is returned to the user interface, and the client can finish the payment. And in order to the admin to edit a product, he has to first log in, then choose a product and take a calibration picture, record the product from multiple angles. This video is then sent to the server, divided into frames and automatically segmented and stored on the server. Then the developer can access these photos and use them for the training. When our requirements are met, the precision that we got was about 96% for our test dataset and the worst process time was 3.85 seconds. However, we got some problems where during recognized products with similar shapes and colors. For next steps, we need to improve our database to obtain an even better precision, improve the model to be able to count overlapping objects and not count unknown objects and adapt and test the product for a real baker. This is Hossein Rostami and I'm presenting the paper titled Topology Optimization and Microfabrication Constraints. 
uh, fabrication process of MEMS devices includes film deposition, photolithography, and etching. The fabrication process is limited by dimension and shapes and resolution of photolithography, etching materials, and crystallography orientation can impose constraints to the fabrication process. Such uh, constraints must be applied to final optimized topology. The proposed method here is using simulated annealing for topology optimization. This process starts from a maximum temperature and generates a random new solution. This new solution gets acceptance if it's better than the previous solution or if it's worse, have some probability to get acceptance. The, in the next step, the new solution would be generated based on history of uh, optimization and this process continues till reaching the minimum temperature. After a density filter makes the final solution more continuous and morphological operators apply the feature size and limitations of microfabrication. The proposed method applied in a cantilever beam problem with the objective of minimizing compliance in different volume fractions. The results from different approaches and for different volume fractions shown here. The left is results from the literature. The middle is results from topology optimization with simulated annealing. And the right is results from the proposed method. As is possible to see here, the results from literature have some gray area and sharp edges. The results from topology optimization with simulated annealing have uh, discontinuities, gray areas, and sharp edges. But the proposed method uh, solved all of these problems and the final solution is ready for fabrication. For different volume fractions like 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, and 0 0.8, it's uh, possible to see the same thing uh, in the final results. To sum up, the proposed method is not limited to the information of objective function, uh, which means it's a non-gradient based topology optimization and it can reach the global optimum. And uh, the more specific thing is the, in this paper is that the microfabrication constraints applied in this uh, approach and the final results is feasible for manufacturing. Thank you very much. Thais and I'm presenting the article entitled A Comparative Study of Machine Learning Classifiers for Electrical Load Disaggregation Based on an Extended NUMI Dataset that was financially supported by FAPESP. The main authors are Thais, Flavio and Wesley. In 2018, Sousa developed a new dataset containing 35 appliances to be classified using an artificial intelligence on a smart meter. Today, it's known the Plage and UK DAO datasets as a reference of electrical devices and your electrical parameters. In this way, this article added 12 appliances on the older dataset and also had a data pre-processing in order to optimize and reduce the error probability. The reliability of the dataset proposed will be measured by the performance achieved 
using the k near to neighbor support vector machine and the random forest chosen to classify the loads. The classification algorithms are sensible to the main parameters, and to minimize the impact of that, it was performed a grid search to define the optimum parameters. Varying these values could interfere on the time processing and also on the performance of classification. RF is the recommended algorithm for the analyzed cases in this article, with the accuracy of 99.6% and the lower computational testing time. This image presents the correlation among the features TADG and apparent power were removed from the NumiBR dataset. To ensure a better load representation, the algorithms and attribute calculations used allow the creation of a robust computational representation capable to perform in real time. The samples could be separated using a rule based classifier. The new 12 appliances added in the developed dataset contribute to improve the reliability of Brazilian NumiBR to be used. As a reference in future studies, as Plage and UKDU are used nowadays. As a better performance stands out RF with higher accuracy and lower processing time. I'm grateful for the FAPES PNC and NPQ financial support. Thank you. like to present this paper named Optimal Allocation of Active and Reactive Generation in Power System Using Z-Bias Matrix and First Order Conditions. This paper was wrote by me, Max Schenck Metel Filho, and Elton Pereira de Souza. In the past, normally the electrical generation located far from the load center. Nowadays, with wind and solar farms and cogeneration plants, these units locate near of the load center, then have a smaller distance and a loss reduction. By the way, the electrical load demand changed during the day and for the each load level has an optimal dispatch. For total loss reduction, the generation of each need unit must be recalculated so that the electrical distance is as short as possible for a losses reduction. For this purpose, we chose choice as object function, the sum of the losses in all lines of the system. Note in this expression, we have two terms that represent the line current increase during the generated units. Deriving an object function with respect to real and imaginary parts of current injection and equaling to zero, I, we have the equations 36 and 37, representing matrix form and solve the equation systems. And with the current increment and the buzz voltage, we can find the active and reactive power increment. For simulate the algorithm, we choose a 16 buses test system, and this figure shows the red bar 
the result of the losses of the for the basic case the in the green bar the best result for the set of five buses and the yellow bar is a excellent result for only one unit the method present a good conversion need between 5 and 25 load for calculations for a 5 per set the method reach, reach almost 80 percent of loss reduction and note that different loss reduction are active depend depending of the set of the buses were chosen for the optimization process thank you Fabiana Volocada, and I present the paper Neuroadaptive Observer Based Photodiagnosis and Photolagrange Control for Quadrotor Amen and of Heiko. Because of the many nature of the quadrotor's UAV and the possibility of occurrence of accidents caused by folds in our system, it's necessary an improvement in the efficiency, safety, and guarantee the reliability of these vehicles. The objective of this paper were first designed in adaptive observer bases on radial basis function neural network, considering just fault in actuators. Moreover, it was used a reduced order model of the quadrotor, where its state is dependent on a single fold. This allows the reduction of the computational complexity of this adaptive observer and make it easier the adjustment of the neural network parameters. Finally, this work presents the design of a photoelectron controller to counteract the effects of folds in the system. This is the linear model of the quadrotor. It's possible to observe in this model that each element of the control signal modifies only a single state. Moreover, each state altered by the input signal is not a function of the others, there being a decoupling between them. That's the reason that allows us to use a model composed by just four states. In this case, all states are measurable. This is the adaptive observer model, adding the thing k in the state space representation of the quadrotor, and f represents the folds. The hat in each variable represents an estimation. The value of k is obtained by the Lyapunov equation, and each radial basis function neural network is a structure in which the inputs are the estimation error of one state, and the output is composed by the sum of weighting of the results of each radial basis function. Considering the Lyapunov candidate function, we obtain the following equation about the weight update. The photoelectron controller uses the fault estimation to neutralize the effects of these faults and ensure system stability, where UR are the control signal generated by a PID structure. This is the complete diagram of the system. The adaptive observer based on the fault estimation provided by each radial basis function through each state estimation error and the FTC system using the information of the FTD structure to counteract the faults in the actuator. The first simulated scenario considers the faults being applied to each actuator in a non simultaneously to analyze the accuracy and speed of fault estimation. The results are compared by another method that uses an extended common filter to train adaptive neural network. The second scenario is relating to the presence of different fault behaviors with simultaneous concurrences, allowing the analysis of the accuracy in estimations and the isolability of fault. The third scenario presents the performance results of the FTC system in the presence of fault, in addition to the response of the quadrotor without faults and without the FTC system for comparison purpose. System simulation results show the effectiveness of the FDD and the FTC structure proposed with respect to the speed and accuracy of the estimations, isolability of faults, Folds with no linear behaviors and a significant reduction of the impact folds in the system.
Hello everyone, I am Paulo Piratello, and I present to you the paper Convolutional Neural Network Applied for Object Recognition in a Warehouse of an Electric Company. The authors thank the financial support of ANEL and COPELGIS, as well as LACTEC for the assistance. A Brazilian electric company is facing obstacles in its logistics, outlays, time-consuming tasks, and a lack of reliability in inventory control. The main contribution of this paper is to build a tool that analyzes the quality of captured images inside this company's warehouse and classify products through these images by means of a convolutional neural network. All images are examined by an image quality assessment algorithm in order to control their quality. Two classes of materials were chosen to compose the dataset, insulators and brace bands. The classification task is performed by a CNN called ResNet50. Using a pre-trained model, a feature extraction method was applied adjusting the weights, biases, and number of neurons on the last layer. After training and validating the model, the neural network was tested 10 times on every combination of a set of hyperparameters, and the average accuracy on the test dataset defined the best set of these values. Add an optimizer, a learning rate of 0.01, and batch size of 16 achieved an average accuracy on the test set of 92.876%, the highest value in comparison with all sets. The tool is a combination of automation, deep learning, and computer vision applied to a real engineering problem. It classified these images with an average accuracy of 92.8%. As feature work, it is compelling to test different CNN architectures, as well as mitigate the difference between validation and test accuracy. Thank you very much. I guess the presentations are over, correct? The videos. So um, that was great. We had six good topics today here, very um, different applications, but probably the core in the uh, techniques, methodologies are somehow similar. That's, that will be a good uh, discussion, I guess. So um, I start with the uh, questions that was raised during the uh, presentations. And um, I'm here with uh, Dr. Harikawa, co-chairing this uh, event. So um, Dr. Harikawa also helps me to manage the questions and um, handle the event. <clears throat> Let's start with the first paper by uh, Mr. Wang. Maybe uh, maybe we can have him on the screen. Yes, thank you. So um, there was a question about your uh, method. Uh, basically, <clears throat> first question is why neural network why do you think neural network is needed uh, for this application okay. well um, at the beginning of the our research we are trying not just to find a way to design a self 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 payment cashier but at the same time what well, we would like we would like to propose a system that is affordable to small establishments so I will share my screen here. So I think it will be. So 
So actually, in searching in some scientific articles and the market, we found free technology that is being applied um, for trying to find a way to design a self-payment self cashier that is QR codes, RFID, and computer vision. And QR codes in RFID actually it's pretty convenient. They are cheaper and they are able to store various types of information. But they, but the labels must be stuck and can be used in unpackaged products. So we found the computer visions that have two solutions, the track solutions. I think that the most, um, I think that uh, the tracking is actually the most ex expensive solution. I think that Amazon is trying to, with Amazon Go is trying to propose um, a solution to try to give a self-payment self uh, market for the customers. And there is the identification cashier, that's our solution, that we, where we use artificial intelligence to identify and count products, the cashier. So we try to find some ways to uh, where we apply uh, computer vision and we compare the results with different models. And the one that they have the most, um, the, be the best results was the actually the yellow P4. So that's the reason that we chose the, to use the neuro neural network. Thank you. Um, that's understandable. Uh, in terms of uh, time, <clears throat> do you think you are getting close to what is needed for the process? I, I believe you mentioned something about uh, three seconds and something, correct? Was the your was the time timing uh, satisfaction? You are you happy with the? Yeah, I think it's pretty good actually. It's four mm -hmm. seconds for uh, to determine the to give the results of the our. Um, I forgot the <laughs> the the word our detection. Is... Yeah, yeah, uh, of our detection. So I think it's pretty okay. It's pretty mm -hmm. good. And at the same time as the the precision was about ninety five percent, and the our requirements were um, attained. So I think it's pretty great the final result that we mm -hmm. had. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how how is the um, how bad is that five percent? Do you think the damage is significant here? Mm, I think sometimes it's, and it depends, but. The main problem of our system is actually that we have these great results just only with when our requirements are met. So when we I think that we put here. So when we uh, when the objects are just too close or when we use no objects in the tray, it might have some problems here. So we think that this might be the main problem at the, our project. And the 5%, I think it's great. And to try to correct this problem, we actually, we put in, in our system a way where the customer can just say to the system that, the, correct the system that, uh, for example, there are not one banana, but there is three bananas just correct the final result. But I don't know if the, um, if the established will like to have this 5% of error. Great, great, thank you. So um, I appreciate, I, I don't see other questions at the moment for your work, but um, if there is anything, maybe we can just approach you in it. But thank you for the nice presentation and answering the questions. I appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, um, Dr. Harikawa, if you're uh, okay, we can switch to paper number two now. Uh, number two. Uh... So, Hossein um, is, Hossein, Mr. Hossein Rostami was presenting, but um, is, is, a, is a paper that, uh, I'm also a co-author, 
But um, yes. uh, there was a Mr. question. Yes. yes. Could I uh, transfer the question? Yeah. My question is very simple. And uh, uh, why I I want some more uh, explanation from you for why using simulated annealing instead of the conventional uh, optimization method like uh, Newton Rapson or so on. What's the advantage of a simulation annealing, simulated annealing? Okay, Professor Barari, if you don't mind, I, I will answer this question. Yes, yes, go ahead, yeah. Okay, there, there's a lot of methods that are already developed for, for topology optimization, like method of moving asymptoms, method of linear programming, uh, method of optimal criteria, but all of them need the kind of derivations of the objective function. So we need to have a formulation of the objective function for this uh, kind of uh, topology optimization methods. And there are also some methods uh, using uh, evolutionary algorithms like uh, simulated annealing and genetic algorithms. Uh, the advantage of the developed method is to use the crystallization factor with simulated annealing. And it makes uh, it more efficient to use simulated annealing in topology optimization. In this method, it doesn't need any derivative of objective function. And if you just have the value of the objective, it's enough to do the procedure of uh, uh, topology optimization. And also it's a global optimization process. So it's not, uh, you don't have to be afraid of stocking in the local minimum or maximum. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can reach a solution more quickly Uh, actually, the evolutionary methods like simulated annealing and genetic algorithms have more computational costs. But with uh, this improvements in using the crystallization factor, we increase the convergence possibility, and uh, it's uh, it have a reasonable time of uh, running for each problem. So it's, it's kind of efficient uh, evolutionary method. Okay. So, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Osain. That was exactly um, this, the the motivation here. Like in this work, motivation was to uh, uh, find a method that is not gradient based. Like there is no need for gradient. But the uh, questions are still are there. Like the, about the time, of course, is more expensive right now. Uh, what about the result? Like just you show the picture about the comparison of the three results. One was the uh, like just more classic approach, then your um, simulated annealing, and then after your filtration. So how do you compare the results of the classic method with the results of your method using simulated annealing in terms of accuracy and the efficiency which one is better okay uh, let me show the, the results again here if you can yes so basically if we, if we look at the concept of design engineering design the goal is design here like you want to design something so how do you compare the design of the first one with the second one Okay, as, as you can see here in the, in the results for a traditional cantilever beam, mm -hmm. something like here. Yes. Uh, here is the traditional method that uses the sensitivity information. It's the traditional methods of topology optimization. Uh, as you can see here, uh, the, there are also some gray areas some short, uh, sharp edges, uh, like here, like here, like here, that is difficult for fabrication process. 
First, we applied the simulated unending for topology optimization. And here is the results we have just with uh, simulated annealing. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we improve the efficiency. We reduce the computational cost, but I still have some intermediate uh, regions, some discontinuities here, some sharp edges, and uh, that's not enough for uh, manufacturing problems. So, mm -hmm. <clears throat> Here, we, we also added to this method uh, two filters. One of them is the density filter, and the other one is using morphological operators, uh, which yes. are usually used for the image processing. Yeah. And uh, okay. the, the first thing here is to, to make sure that we can uh, make it feasible for fabrication. Yes. So uh, I just like about the um, filtration and manufacturing, we don't have to discuss now. Only about the simulated annealing versus the uh, versus the method of the um, method that we we saw there in the original design. Like what what is the efficiency in terms of compliance? Okay, it's uh, the, the results are similar to the to the results from the literature. Uh, I don't have in this slide the, the the values, but in the full paper I presented the the full values. Um, the the results are close to the traditional methods, not exactly the same, and still not improving, but they are very close to the results from the traditional method. So we can say that uh, we can get the same results for the objective function, which is the compliance here. In addition, we have the, this benefit to don't need the gradient information. If we want to um, find all the solutions that have the same compliance for 0.5 percent volume fraction do you think it's possible you mean we, we discovered that if they, there are other possibilities right yes like there i mean you you, you just show here that there are two possibilities so i'm curious how many more possibilities exist really Okay, for, for the simple problem like this, the, the solution is almost unique because this is the, the only structure that should be uh, uh, efficient enough in this case. But in the more complicated cases, uh, I, I think, we, we didn't apply yet, but I think this method uh, just find the best solution. So it, it's not um, possible to see the other uh, possible solution. Okay. And one more thing that uh, we are working on is using the multi-objective uh, topology optimization, which we can um, have more than one uh, objective and get the, <coughs> the combination of solutions. The, um, making the Pareto front and see uh, uh, the combination of uh, objectives in its solution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But for generative design, I actually this, uh, this method cannot show all of the possible design, just the best one. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you, and uh, thank you, Professor Horikov. Thank you. So we can uh, switch to uh, um, paper number three. <clears throat> uh, Professor Rekavo has a question for this paper regarding the uh, the uh, effect of, uh, uh, I mean, the errors in the system for the while that uh, the system is the learning is not completed yet yeah so how the system react until completion of the 
learn is from Mrs. Tessis. The microphone. Ah. Sorry. <laughs> Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for your question. Actually, we did the steps separately, separated. Uh, so I would say there is no interaction in the whole system. First, it was collected the voltage and the current loads and built the data set with the CPT, CPT indexes that was calculated based on the theory. So the algorithm was trained to learn how to classify the loads based on this data set built. The main idea is to build a reliable Brazilian data set to represent the loads and allow the physical construction of the smart meter to be part of the new system uh, and to be capable to identify the loads and the customer individual consumptions. On, uh, so once the physical system is built, I will say that we'll perform normally doing the measure, the classification and the reports steps simultaneously. Oh, okay. So you have a first try, uh, a draft of some reaction, how to react. I think it will react normally since it, the algorithm was trained based on the data set. They, mm -hmm. will, uh, they will be capable to classify the loads correctly since they learned it. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so um, there is another question about the mole approach that um, is from Professor Suzuki. And okay. uh, the, the question is really why classifiers? Why not neural networks? And okay. If you network, what was what will be the result? Um, we tried to use neural networking in other studies that we did, but we didn't get any greater results. So we prefer to choose to proceed with classifiers because of the computational efforts and the easy it is simpler to develop it to process in uh, in comp compared with neural network so it was more about your implementation uh, cost like it was easier for you to implement yes uh, can you can you just estimate what happens with neural network if, if someone wants to solve it with neural network is is there a better result available or not uh we did uh some simulations using that neural network and probably we didn't get the accuracy between 95 percent i will mm -hmm. say that Beautiful. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. Very much. Question, Dr. Aspaldo. Yes, it's okay. <laughs> so um, we move to our uh, fourth paper now. Can you? Um, can you have the uh, Mr. Phil Hall on the screen? May I make a question? 
to yes. Mr. Max. Sure, sure. Sorry, good afternoon. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, I, I just uh, want to make a question. Uh, is your study dependent of a uh, profile of power generation system of the country, yes. the region? For example, Brazil has a very peculiar, particular uh, profile of the gen power generation system. Is a there is a lot of uh, hydroelectric power plant and the less small power generating stations like in Europe or Asia. Your system uh, is useful for uh, our profile like Brazil or is more useful for effective for uh, countries that has us more distributed generation systems. Yes. Sorry, I, I don't understand the question. Uh, the, the, yes. Is the uh, electrical profile, the, the load profile? Yes, uh, I mean, uh, profile. Uh, the characteristics of the power. Yes. Uh, the, the, the method is for one point of the operation. And for forever change, you have to calculate every uh, mm -hmm. again. Uh, may I make the question in Portuguese, maybe? Uh, okay, I prefer to understand. De repente, é um problema do meu inglês para transmitir a questão, mas eu gostaria de saber se o sistema que o professor desenvolveu, que apresentou agora, ele é mais adequado para um determinado tipo de sistema perfil de sistema de geração de energia. Por exemplo, a Europa e Ásia, eu sei que tem um sistema mais distribuído, pequenas plantas gerando aqui e ali. Ao passo que no Brasil é muito mais uh, concentrado, hidrelétricas grandes aqui, outra lá. Então, é, se é, o sistema que foi apresentado ele é mais adequado, me parece adequado para sistemas que nem o, o mais distribuído. Isso é verdade? Isso. Eu, eu posso responder em português? Sim, sim, por favor. Obrigado. Bem, o, o, o método ele é mais adequado para quando o sistema tem geração distribuída e geração distribuída é despachado, certo? Então, aqui no Nordeste do Brasil, em Rio Grande do Norte, a gente tem, tem um ambiente de geração distribuída bem razoável. A gente já tem 5 GB instalado e a pretensão de 10 GB para instalar. É, porém, então, é, era possível aplicar o método aqui, porém, a, é, não é despachável. A, é, a, basicamente, é a energia eólica que a gente tem aqui, o que não é despachável. Então, teria que ser funcionar com, juntamente com o banco de baterias para viabilizar a despachabilidade do, do, do sistema. E aí, sim, o método seria, seria aplicável. Não sei se eu fiquei claro. Ah, sim. Foi perfeitamente. É justamente o que eu estava querendo saber. É mais adequado para o perfil do Nordeste, que tende a ser o futuro do Brasil também. E, né? Não sei se é o futuro, mas sim. No Nordeste tem bastante, a gente é muito rico em solar e eólica. Então, Perfeito. eu acredito que no futuro próximo, com mais tecnologia, essas energias poderão ser mais despacháveis. E aí sim, para cada ponto de operação, o operador definir quanto cada, cada unidade vai despachar, para poder ter o ótimo de perdas. Uh, professor Max, uh, do you want to translate it to English or uh, prefer, I mean, may I translate to Professor Barari? I prefer to translate. Okay, Professor <laughs> Barari, the answer of the Professor Max is that uh, the system Professor presented is more yeah. adequate to uh, a distributed power generation system. The place, the countries that has uh, a many small 
capacity mm -hmm. power generation system. Yeah, yeah, this, yeah. Uh, this is the reality in the northeast of Brazil. Mm. There are no so big hydroelectric generators like in southeast yeah. Brazil, but small uh, geological uh, wind generators here mm -hmm. and so on, very small plants distributed. Uh, the Northeast is, uh, has a capacity of uh, 5 gigabytes in the near future. This increased to 10 gigabyte, gigabytes and uh, distributed uh, energy generation. So this is the system presented yeah, here it is to mm -hmm. be used mm -hmm. in such systems. This is the answer yes. from but uh, what I can add is, this is uh, interesting because uh, I, I see in, in the future there are a lot of uh, motivations for that. Like even in Canada, there are a lot of discussions about a small nuclear reactor. They call it modular nuclear reactor. So each reactor is very small. Instead of having a big power plant, there are smaller units. But there are a lot of them distributed in different locations. Mm. So, so that's. Desculpe, não entendi. Então, ele está concordando sobre a tendência do do sistema de geração de energia que tende a ser realmente de fato distribuído, que existe uma um movimento, um interesse pelos pelas plantas nucleares de pequena capacidade, mas em grande quantidade, distribuídas. Isso não, evidente, eu acho que não no Brasil, mas no exterior, mas é, existe essa tendência e, de fato, esse sistema que o professor apresentou agora é adequado. Sim, 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 porque daí não é uma nova uma... realidade. Exatamente, para uma, uma, uma é, nuclear, você pode despachar o quanto quiser, a hora que quiser, então fica bem mais fácil para a aplicabilidade do nosso do método. Yes. I just ask one uh, quick, quick question as well. Uh, you you had first order condition. Uh, is it about the um, basically? It, it is. It looks like a simplification that you are doing in the in the model. So if you do second order condition instead of first order, how much accuracy can improve? Yes. I think it's, it's, it's more, it's, uh, will improve it more accuracy, but uh, the first sort condition converges very easily. Okay. And, then, and then I don't, don't, I don't have uh, necessity of the second order condition. I mm -hmm. think so, but I don't, I didn't test. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good afternoon. So we, we switch to um, our fifth paper um, with um, Mr. Uh, Okoda. Okada. Hello, professors. Hello, everyone. So, uh, Mr. Okada, one question uh, I'm just quickly starting because of time is about the um, time itself. So, right now you have the fault detection method if is the computational time allow you to really apply it for the uh, ground there well, uh, in fact uh, normally we have two 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 methods right using artificial neural network uh, you have some approach by classifier mm -hmm. but uh, in this cases we have a data set and the training offline our system uh but when you talk about fault it's made difficult to obtain all this all this data about faults because it's difficult to to, to, to test experimentally mm. uh, so you need to translate this offline training online training okay? and uh, in this case in the neuroadaptive observer uh the combination with observer is make it easier the the training in online way, the, the, the neural network. Because uh, 
look on this system the observer will estimate all the states and the fault will be estimated by neural network but if we have some problems with the estimation by the neural network the observer will tell you so uh, in this case the real time uh, the real time training uh, it's better and uh, it's, it's does show any problem about it in results. Mm -hmm. We have currently uh, an experience with drone control. Is a is a game camera based and then it find the location. Is a closed loop system, not neural network involved. But we have a lot of issues with the drift. I Means error gradually builds up. Okay, so you you have a little bit of error, but if at the beginning is good, but gradually it builds up and then at some point it's out of control so this is a, this is a problem um, uh, about uh, about model right mm -hmm. and in some approach this problems is avoided by using filter right it's not on the system monitoring level it's uh in the lower level in the control system and the filtering you adapt to uh the signals the state uh, provide the state estimation and the, the measure variables provided by the sensors mm -hmm. and uh, you avoid this problem of drifting in the filtering process okay thank you very much thank Thanks. you very much so uh, is time for our last paper of the day Mr. Uh, Piratello. So the, there's a question from Professor Suzuki for you. And it's about uh, selection of ResNet. What was the motivation for using ResNet? And can you compare it with uh, YOLO? OK. Good afternoon, everybody. and. Thank you also, Marcos Suzuki, for the question. It's a interesting question, actually. So we searched in the uh, related work, and we found a, a trend for ResNet 50 in problems like ours, you know, in a, inside a warehouse um, with the task of uh, electrical parts recognition, and we also identified that ResNet 50 is a good um, classifier, a good CNN for a binary problem. That was our case. So also ResNet 50 has skip, skip connections. So it helped the, the transfer learning, you know, it helps a, a pre-trained model to learn better and fast. So we choose ResNet 50 to attack this uh, this problem, our problem. But however, we are testing, of course, uh, uh, another five CNNs right now. So we will publish, I think, next month. So we will compare ResNet with a AlexNet, DenseNet, SqueezeNet. Mm, I'm forgetting you the last one. But yes, we, we will compare the, the results with other CNN architectures. So about YOLO, it's also a interesting question. We are training with YOLO right now. We cannot compare like today but we will have soon, very soon, a, a data to, to compare with YOLO. Very interesting. <laughs> yeah, a major question. Uh, sure. It's a, a curiosity, but uh, when you use neural network, convolutional neural network, or uh, another kind of uh, network, uh, neural network, you you are using uh, actually the morphology. You are analyzing the the morphology or the 
other parameters of the image like brightness and the contrast is some other more uh, numerical characteristics okay so when <laughs> when we the we difference are using... yeah. uh, you are analyzing the shape the morphology the type of uh, geometry or some other characteristics okay the, the the first the main the main goal is to find uh, all characteristics you know all features of the mm -hmm. image if you have a bad uh, quality you know too bright the image is too bright the image is too dark it uh, will not show a good result so in our case we first before we, we send all the images to the CNNs, we made a, a check, you know, to see if uh, the images had a properly light distribution, something like that, in order to treat, to, to attack problems with luminosity. That was a, a, a concern that we had because mm -hmm. the... the 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 warehouse it's a, a little dark so we had to put some lights and it was a concern so yes the image will the CNN will get all the things that the image uh, is showing so it's if the image is showing uh, objects that have occlusion or if it's too too dark or too bright the CNN is capable of <laughs> uh, doing a, a a recognition. Sorry, it's not able to do it this, this recognition. It mm. will interfere. For example, you can uh, uh, if you want to uh, distinguish two objects uh, by its texture surface roughness for example and uh, this is more smooth and this is more rough you can add this criteria to the algorithm oh yes yes <laughs> that that is the it it can be tuned by the filters that the convolutional neural network have so it, it's kind of a hyperparameter. So the CNNs work with lots of different fi uh, filters. So the image goes to these features, these filters, and some fil filters are able to detect uh, lines, are able to detect uh, edges, or even uh, structures. Our textures, so it's kind of a hyperparameter, so it can be tuned. Okay, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Great. If you have some in quest, so uh, if somebody has have another questions, I'll be happy to to answer. Yes, I guess uh, at this time I will. Uh ask for questions not only for the last paper but for the other papers if there are some questions so that's great i think um we are fine now there were six great uh, talks today and uh, some very good questions were raised uh, Overall, uh, I think we had a good uh, session this afternoon. Yes. Um, if um, Professor Harikawa, you have any comment to add? Yes, I, 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 I'm very happy to participate in the, to join this session. It's very interesting, very good questions. I could learn a lot and uh, know uh, uh, very recent 
themes and the interesting researches. I congratulate, I want to con congratulate everyone for good works. Congratulate also Professor Barari for good conduct, the great conduction of the section. You're welcome. It was with your support. Thank you very much, everyone. So I think we can uh, conclude this uh, session now.